the passage that uh, are we okay? Okay. There's something on the screen up there. It's, it's okay. Okay. <clears throat> I never know what to do with all these electronic things. Anyway, in the passage that Janine read in Romans chapter 13, in verse 14, it says, Clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. The word that Paul uses there for clothe is in duo in Greek which is where we get the English word "indu," And I asked Miranda, I said, when do we ever use the word "indu"? I mean, think about that. How often do you use the word "indu"? And we came up with a couple of ideas. We looked it up. We did some uh, etymology study <laughs> on it and so forth. But basically the word means to provide a quality <laughs> or an ability to someone or something or to put on clothing. Okay, so he's endued with new threads, that kind of thing, all right? Yeah. Something like that. But it can also be, this Greek word can also be translated in dao, to put on, to clothe yourself. <clears throat> and interestingly, in Greek, there is an antonym to endue. And that is in duo is the Greek word for endu. Ek duo is the Greek word for the antonym, which is used in the gospel to uh, describe what happened to Jesus at the crucifixion. They stripped him of his garments. Ek duo, take off the clothes. In duo, put on the clothes. Okay. <coughs> but Kittle's Theological Dictionary, I think, had the best translation from <coughs> Greek into English, and that is to sink into. In duo is to sink into. And think of that in terms of that passage I just quoted from Romans 13, 14. To sink into the Lord Jesus Christ. That's just got all sorts of possibilities to it. Anyway. Clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. When we had a bishop's council meeting a um, week and a half ago, and I have been harassing the archbishop to let us see this new Eucharist. We keep hearing about it. We were supposed to have it in October, and nobody has seen it that I know of. So can you show it to us? And he says, I'm not allowed to show it to you. I'm like, why not? I want to study it. I want to look at it before we have to start using it. No, nope, it's not allowed. But we talked about it a little bit, and it turns out that they are going to make a change that will affect you. And that is, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Mm -mm. With my spirit. And with your spirit. And with your spirit. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. So we did a little bit of looking, the Bishop's Council did a little bit of looking online about why that versus and also with you. Well, of course, in the Latin mass, they say Dominus Verbiscum, which is the Lord be with you. And the response is et cum spiritu tuo, which means and with your spirit. So it's going back to the Latin mass understanding of that. But we looked up the Catholic, uh, explanation of why they're going back to it and it was really interesting totally theological heret theologically heretical but very interesting anyway um you only say and with your spirit according to the catholic teaching on this if you're addressing a priest and i'm like what and you read a little further and it says because this refers to the gift of the spirit that he received at his ordination. Like I said, it's totally heretical. This is, I mean, no, 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 no. Because the same spirit that is in me is in you. We were baptized and in our baptism, we received the Holy Spirit. I got more than you did. No, I didn't. Nobody. No, 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 no. And 
when you were confirmed, that spirit was stirred up in you when I was ordained. What happened? I received the anointing of the stirring up of the spirit. It's a different anointing in confirmation and ordination, but brothers and sisters, it's the same spirit. I don't know. Can you? <laughs> and with thy spirit, then, can or with your spirit can only be sent to another Christian. So you're weaving out. No, 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 no. Because they don't have a spirit. No, 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 no. But we're not going to go there right now. That is a that is another. We're not going to talk about that right now. Okay. No, because every human has a spirit. Okay, that's not an issue. But the point is that the anointing is on all of us. It is a different anointing depending on how God is using you in his kingdom for his body, for his glory, for the spread of his kingdom. The spirit is in you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. And so when we put on or are endued with or endowed or clothed or sunk into the Lord Jesus Christ, we are, as it were, empowering the spirit within us by immersing ourselves in Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, in Galatians chapter three, verses 26 and 27, Paul says, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ and we need to continue to do that so what does that clothing look like what does Paul say that is in Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 through 14, he says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, clothe yourselves with, and hear this, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other, and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. That really goes with prophetic words. We just heard. <clears throat> and then here's a clincher. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. I didn't do anything to deserve God's forgiveness. And the fact that God was willing to send his son to die that I might be forgiven. How hard is it to forgive somebody when they have wronged you? Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. We put on the fruit of the Spirit. We practice love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control, unlike that poor guy who confronted you. We clothe ourselves with compassion, and kindness, and humility. There's not a lot of that in evidence right now in the church, and it's a real shame, because it's in desperate need more now than at any time I can think of in my life. Okay, so here's a question for you. We keep hearing all of this stuff over and over and over again. We heard these prophetic words this morning. But what are we doing with those prophetic words? You know, in Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 3, when Samuel uh, had heard the, the Lord when he was with Eli, then after that whole incident, the author of the book of Samuel says, the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. 
How often do we let prophetic words just fall to the ground? We never think about them again. Oh, that was a cool word. That was a good word. Walk out the door, never think about them again. Just a couple of weeks ago, Amanda Newcomb had a word from the Lord that what we behold is what we become. Have you thought about that even once since she said that? <laughs> yeah, it's, that was a powerful word. What we behold is what we become. What are you beholding? What are you looking at? What is the focus of your attention? Because whatever it is that you're focused on, whatever it is you're paying attention to, whatever it is that you're spending time concentrating on and looking at, that's what you are becoming. And it was an invitation from the Lord for us to behold him, to look at him. No better time than the season of Advent. To begin looking again at the Lord and seeking him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. So what are we doing about these words spoken? I, I'm sitting here looking at Jackie and, and uh, Brian, Brian sitting there taking notes. That's a good thing. I commend you. That's awesome. That's, that's the kind of enthusiasm for the word that we need. Praise the Lord. I personally like to go back and re-listen to the sermons. They're available, by the way, on the website and on YouTube, and you can listen to them too. I love to go back and hear again what Father David, Father Chris said. Sometimes I go back and listen to mine and go, wow, did I really? Anyway, <laughs> um, but seriously, it's available. Sadly, when we began Church of the Resurrection, we had a number of different people over the first 10 years or 15 years, probably, who would transcribe the prophetic words for us, and then we'd send them out via email. And I've been asking, I quit asking, but I was asking for a long time, is there anybody who would be willing to do that? It would be really great if we could have that so that we wouldn't let the prophetic words fall to the ground. Sir, they're being recorded. Yeah, I know. Oh, I'm aware they're being recorded. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but think about the words that have been given over the last couple of years. Just about three years ago, we heard the word that Father David um, made reference to when we were praying before the service, and that is that God is dismantling His church. So that he can remake it in his image. Paul gives us a really good word about that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 following. He says by the grace God has given me. I laid a foundation as a wide builder. And someone else is building on it. That's you. God laid a foundation through Paul and the other apostles, and we are building on that foundation. Paul goes on to say, but each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. We are building on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone. We have had generation after generation of leaders who have brought us to this place. 
And now we are the builders who are building on the foundation that has been laid. Are we listening to God? Are we using the tools that he has given us? Are we paying attention and focusing on him that we may behold that which we are to become? We've had a number of different words in these last few years about the rebuilding. There were a couple of different Lenten meditations, the meditations on the, the virtues. Have you looked again at what those virtues are that the Holy Scriptures have laid out for us? We had the, the Lenten meditations on the building of the new Jerusalem, God's plan for his new church, his new Jerusalem. Are you looking for and anticipating the rebuilding of Christ's church in his image? Where is your focus? With what are you being clothed? Well, friends, we're beginning a new year. This is the first Sunday in Advent. And I believe that we have our marching orders. I believe God wants us to Pay attention to focus on him. You can focus on the world and become like the world. You can look at all the garbage that's out there and have that be your, your the focus of your identity, or you can focus on Christ. And I believe God wants us to focus on him, to clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are the bricks of this new church, this new Jerusalem. What material are we going to use? Let us behold him. Let us clothe ourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us sink into him. Amen.